Amen. Amen. So look, yeah. we're going to be hey sister Andrea. Sister Andrea got on. She mm -hmm. got on. You got on all the clothes. It's cool out there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome. Hey, Sister Nancy. God bless you. I know you're driving. But we're gonna we're gonna go forward in the word of God. I want to kind of talk to you briefly before we go forward. I want to kind of give you guys something that I believe is it, it should be in all things, but I want you to understand that why it is a requirement for what we're doing. Anytime you study the word of God, you want to have a pen, you want to have a pad, you want to have your Bible, you want to be prepared. Uh, you let me give you an, an, an example. If I go to a ministry and I and I'm getting ready to teach. And I see that the people say a person doesn't have their Bible, doesn't have their notes, doesn't have their pad. The first thing I know is, oh, I can only go shallow with this person. They're only going to go shallow. And then they're not going to remember. Human beings only retain 10% of things they hear that last less than 10 minutes. So if, if I tell you something and I made this thing 10 minutes long, you'll retain about 10 to 20% of it. That 20% of you're great. If it's over an hour, you're talking about the three to 5% range. We want you to retain it because remember this, the goal of Kingdom Ambassadors is to prepare you. It's, it, some stuff will be for right now that's gonna meet the needs of what you're dealing with right now. And some stuff will be for 20 years from now where you'll be like, wow, I remember that like a lot of things I talk to you all about now is stuff that I learned at the foot of my father. Seven to eight months before my father passed away, God told me you need to go in and question him every day. And I would literally grab a notepad and I would sit down and ask him question after question after question after question. every day, pretty much all day. And I was with him so much, he couldn't get around. He couldn't even get up to go to the restroom. I would go to the restroom, help him to the restroom every time he had to go. That's how much I was there with him. And I asked him every question that you can think of. What about Islam? What about this? At the time they were saying there was no such thing as a woman pastor. Is that in the Bible, Father? Tell, tell me more about it. Tell me this, tell me that. And as he told me, I sat there and I wrote down. Very, very, very important. All right. So you want to be you want to be that sponge. You don't want to assume you know it. And even if you know it, do you know it? <laughs> you know what I mean? I was listening to something today like God's name is Yahweh. I know that. You know what I mean? I could talk. I was as the dude was talking. I knew a lot of this, you know, the words like Yahweh is not spelled Y-A-H-W-E-Y. They spell it Y-W-A-V-H. But those are called tetra 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 grammatons. It's a Hebrew word. Now, if I say, you know what Yahweh is? Yeah, I know what Yahweh is. Do you? What does it mean? Well, it means I am that I am. And then I found out today that's true, but it's not fully correct. It means something deeper. So we want to grab it and write it down. Amen. Bible, pen, pad, show that you are putting forth the effort. Amen. Y'all can talk back to me. I want to hear you. I want to hear from y'all. Amen. 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 So look, I want you to write this down. Look, everything we do, we base it off of the word of God. The word of God is the lamp unto our feet and it is the light unto our path. In today's society, people are not, they don't, they'll, they'll, they'll say, yes, I believe in the word of God. So as long as it it lines up with what they believe. That's totally different than what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying we believe in sola scriptura. Write that down. S-O-L-A scriptura. It's S-C-R-I-P-T-U-R-A. We rest upon the word of God alone. Sola, sola means only, alone. And scriptura is the word, scripture alone. We function by that. And what we do is we look at the word of God, the promises of God to live victorious lives that we might be prepared when things don't go crystal, you know, crystal clear and grow, go good. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want to move and function by that. 
Amen. So right now, what you guys are going through, you're going through your, your, um, your, uh, your curriculum in the groups. How's that coming? Y'all liking it? Y'all having fun? Yeah. I don't, y'all don't look like y'all having yeah. fun. <laughs> and you know what? When y'all go back and rewatch this, y'all gonna be like, we look like we are not having fun. Are y'all having fun? If y'all not, yeah, yeah. let me know. Yeah. Y'all like it? I do. Yeah. It opens up uh, that discussion that we were talking about as far as, um, like I said, Brother Dono had us, um, like I said, when he had us read, he had us come back and talk about what we just read. Like a lot of us sort of read the scripture just to, you know, we assume we get it. You know, we assume that we know what it says. And just like how you kind of broke down, you know, Sola Scriptura, like he, it, it made us go back and actually look up the words, put it back into context, and it actually changes um, a lot of the things that we read. So, like, like I said, for the us having the groups the way they are is 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 really really beneficial, especially for for someone who's learning, you know, and still um, who's fresh in this, you know. So, so yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, anybody else? Um, I like it. Um, it. It helps you to read the Bible and to dig through it. Mm -hmm. um, you receive new revelations about things. And I like the way it gives you something to read throughout the week. So it hits it at different aspects each day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. Amen. Remember this. I don't care what you get. If you don't put into it, you won't get out of it. And I and we're going to talk about that today. That's the reason I, I'm glad we can segue from that. All right. We're going to talk about giving God your all. Giving God your all. Giving God your all. Go with me to Psalms 103, 1 through 3. Psalms 103, 1 through 3. You guys don't have to be muted unless it's loud where you are. <laughs> All right. We not we, I mean we're recording, but I want to hear from you. I want you to talk back to me. I want you I want to make sure that you understand it. Psalms 103, the 103rd division of Psalms. Okay. How many chapters in the book of Psalms? None. It's divisions. Didn't you just say it's a division? Books. No, no. it's all books. Yeah. It's all books. Remember, I told y'all that it's a hundred. Oh, How many yeah. books is it? Sorry, hundred. Yeah, it's like hundred and uh, Everybody know the 150th. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him with the Timberland dance. That's let everything that has breath. That's Psalms 150, the last one. The 150 Psalms. 150. Right. Each one of my individual books. I'm just I'm messing with you all because I told y'all this before. <laughs> Did I tell y'all how many divisions, how many how many sections of it it is? It's five sections. Moses wrote some of Psalms. Did y'all know that? Moses wrote some yeah. of the Psalms. David wrote some Moses. of the Psalms. Solomon wrote some of the Psalms. Uh, David's musicians. That's why when he says Selah, Selah means a pause at a note where you think about the next coming verse. I just wanted to throw that out to you. But watch this. I want you to see this. This is a powerful scripture. We probably know this, but I want you to see it. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Stop right there. Uh, the, the, this scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul, all. I want you to underline that word, all. 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 All is a powerful, powerful word. <laughs> what does all mean? Everything. 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 
So if I say I want all your money, how much money is going to be left for you? None. Nothing. Mm, none. none. <laughs> how many of y'all have given the Lord your heart? I am. You said I love you. Your heart? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said hard, H A R D. No, no. <laughs> heart. I was like, mm. <laughs> yes, I have. I have. Mm. All of it? Mm -hmm. No. 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 Y'all, y'all want some of y'all heart for yourselves? Y'all don't want to get the Lord on your heart. <laughs> so wait a minute. How you, if, so you functioning on how much of your heart? I know I'm messing with y'all right now, but I'm serious. How much of your heart do you still have left? If you were to use a scale of one to 10, how much does the Lord have and how much do you feel like you have? Mm. Based on your current situation, situation, if I may say it so hoodish, if you, <laughs> based on your <laughs> current situation, if, if somebody took some tallies, one through 10, and they have to break it up, how much does the Lord have? Is it you, the Lord got six and you got four? Does the Lord has seven and I have three? Okay. That's now, who's in the court of law? Would you bet? Amari's life on it because I know you are nah. like I bet mine, but not baby girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like, let me see the books, Lord, before I <laughs> <laughs> find <laughs> Hold on one one sec. <laughs> right. Look, I want I'm saying this to you guys to just think, take an account. I was sitting there and the Lord, I could hear the, the Holy Spirit singing that song. Uh Wants it all, he wants it all. I love that song. He said, serve me with your whole heart, right? Yeah. All, he wants all, all that is within you. I want you to write this and, and comprehend this. The scripture starts off by saying, bless the Lord. That word bless is Baruch. B-R-U-C, I think B-R-U-C-H. B-R-U-A-C-H. We call, we would... You hear him saying Barack, right? Barack, hallelujah. Y'all remember that song? Barack, yeah. that's the wrong way to say it. It's Baruch. Matter of fact, every time a blessing is pronounced, the word Baruch is spoken. In the New Testament, they already assume we know it. So the scripture says that Jesus took the, the bread and the cup at the Last Supper and he blessed it. They just assumed that you and I would know it. But we don't. The Gentiles came along and they didn't know what it is. Anytime they get ready to bless it, they would say Baruch Ata Adonai Elienu, which means Malik Haolem, which means blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, and then whatever else. So when Jesus broke the bread, watch this, I want you to see it. He said, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who have given us bread from the earth. That's what they said God had them to say from the time Moses was sitting in there and the death angel passed over their house. Remember when the firstborn was killed? From that yeah. day forward, they said, this is bread from the earth. And then Jesus looked and said, this bread is my body that was broken for you. This is going to come up from the earth when I resurrect from the dead. And then he took the cup. This ain't this is a Gatorade, but just picture it like the cup. He says, Baruch Ata Adonai Elienu Malik Olam, for the fruit of the vine that you have given to us. And then he looked at him and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. And they were sitting there like all the way thousands of years ago. He was planning it. They ate the body and drank the blood of Jesus Christ before they were set free from Egypt. <laughs> the, war, the, the, the metaphor is the body and the blood of Jesus, the death, burial, and the resurrection is going to free you from sin. It's going to free you from bondage of Satan. And you're going to be able to walk in freedom and newness of life as a people, the chosen people of God. And what, what happens is when we don't understand it, when we see blessings, we think that it's us. Blessings has absolutely nothing to do with what comes to you. God is blessed. Look at the scripture. Bless the who? The Lord. Oh, Lord. 
Do you know that that word Baruch or Bar Baruch? It means to bow your knee. When you see him, he is so blessed. I bless him by bowing my knee before him. This is what we do in prayer. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, they translate it bless and sometimes they translate it praise. It says, I will, uh, it, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's lifting up your hands, but enter into his courts with praise. That's to bow down. When you go into the inner place, the close place with God, you see the blessed one. He is the source of all your blessings. So what David is saying here is, Lord, I bless you. Oh, my soul. Watch this. That word soul, underline, y'all underlining it? I'm giving y'all some nuggets here. <laughs> it's nefesh. N-E, I think it's P-H-E-S-H. -E nefesh. Hebrew, in Hebrew, nefesh just means this. It's not deep. It means that which animates you. <laughs> a dead man, when he, when he loses the breath out of his body, he does this. He can't move. His body ceases. He's stuck in that time. Whatever the last thing was, that's, their bodies are stuck like that. They, they don't have anything within them to animate them. Adam was laying on the ground after he was formed. And when God breathed into Adam, the breath of life, Adam became a living nefesh. He begins, he was animated. This body is a biological machine devoid of anything until the spirit comes in it, which is our spirit. And then he gives us a soul, the ability to see, to understand, to comprehend, to move. David is saying, everything that's, that animates me bows before you everything that's in me he said it right after it <laughs> oh my soul all that is within me i bless his holy name all love the lord your god with all your might all your body all your soul all your spirit love him give him everything he wants it all so what that means is don't try to count it. That's why I asked you guys that. How can you really count that? Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, I gave the Lord 10 today, and yesterday I gave him seven. That's not what the <laughs> scriptures talk. That's not what he's saying. You can, that's why I asked you, if you, would you put your life on it? It's impossible, because who keeps the numbers? Yeah. Is the number scale one through 10? Is it uh, one through 100? Is it one through three? Is it? Smiley face, sad face, <laughs> happy face. You know the little stickers you get when you was little? Is it a green star, gold star? This is what messes you up in prayer. You have an imaginary number or thing where you feel like you praying, you, you killing prayer. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm doing good. And then when you don't do that, what do you do? Yeah, I don't pray like I ought. You know everybody mm -hmm. says that? Yeah. Do you know why everybody says that? Because there yeah. is no measurement for when you're doing good at prayer. <laughs> God don't be like, whoo, she killed the game tonight. <laughs> Matter of fact, Jesus said, don't even try to be loud. He said, they, he said, these people, they think by speaking louder, their prayers will be heard more. He said, they're deceived. Do you think that if you get louder, God is going to hear you more? He's talking about passion. You can be loud. Father, I bless you. Father, I love you. You're merciful. You're great. You're awesome. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just saying words. And then you have this person. Father, um, uh, I love you and I thank you. Just words. But then I can flip it and with all my passion, Father, I bless you. It's all of my, or I could be quiet. My prayers, I, I, sometimes I'm loud, and then other times I'll be just praying, blessed are you, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> you know what I'm, 
is it is it with all it that's what i'm saying he knows when it's all he knows when it's all jesus gave an example they were all giving gifts to the temple and you know the big big wigs come out you know they, they didn't call it making it rain back then but they was making it rain they was bringing in gold god bless you priest they was doing the same thing that we do now i give my ties come up get wear your big hat but that's Sunday. <laughs> Sunday morning, get that big offering. And then it was this one lady. She's sitting there. She's broke. She comes up and she gives two, two little pennies. And Jesus stopped and said, who here gave the most? It was like, uh, the person who has the most? He said, look at this woman. She has absolutely nothing. And she's given all that she had. She had two pennies. Now, you know, most of us would have counted that up like, it's only two pennies, but these my two pennies, right? This is all I get. Lord, I give you one. I give you 50%, right? I give you, I'll give you one penny. I'll keep my one. If I get a hundred more of these, I have a dollar. Go to the, if they have a penny candy store, if I run across them, that's a hundred piece of candy. That might keep me alive, right? You just rationalize it. This lady said, I have two. I'm giving it all. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. Quality. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Let me show y'all the, the reason I was telling you all it is important and it is vital for you to write stuff down for when you get ready to come to do Bible study that you, that you show that you care. Do you know that every one of these lessons that we do now, I could easily just go and get a curriculum, bring it here. This is what I could literally do. Get curriculum that's already pre-planned for the year. And then I'll read the heading of it. Look at the scripture. Say, okay, I know this stuff, and then come and just flow and just teach and have you write. I don't do that. I'll literally be doing, I use a, I use a Bible program called Bible, um, it's the Bible app. I forgot the name of it. It's Not Logos? Bible Logos. Logos, 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 Logos Bible. Was, I'm literally doing hundreds, it tells you the amount of hours, hundreds of hours of research to bring you just one little message. On the scripture, I knew I know it by my heart. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, all is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the soul, Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of our iniquities and heals all of our diseases, right? I'm not reading it. I could just say, I know this scripture. That's not my all. I'm giving you half. I'm giving you less than half when I do that. And he's too important for me to give you half. Yes. Somebody on this line might hear something. One of you all might hear it and it sparks your destiny and you go and leave thousands to the kingdom of God. Or you, everybody comes on here, we go through the motions and then next week, I only need one. I heard, now look, one thing I kept from Tupac, because he used to be my favorite rapper, but I had to purge everything he did because it was all bad, right? But one thing I kept for, from him that he said, he said, he said, look, I won't be the one to change the world, but I'll definitely be the one that sparks the brain of the one that changed the world. All I need to do is spark one brain. I don't need <laughs> 5,000. I might never preach to any more than what's on here right now. But if one of you becomes Billy Graham, every one of the souls you bring to the kingdom of God, I'm going to be sitting in there like, you did better than me. You a beast. But I had a little input. I threw a couple of seeds. I gave, I, I threw a couple of seeds in there. You know what I mean? You might look up and Salim, brother Salim and sister Andrea be on TV. He'd be like Creflo Dollar. And she'd be like Lady Dollar sitting there. God bless you. I'll be like, look at my dude. You know, <laughs> go. He'll be up there like the word go, nefesh. See, y'all don't know about that. I'll be like, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Tell him about that old nefesh, brother Salim. I only need one of you to do it. Will it be you? And that's why you give your all. What does it? What do you think it took for this to be written? Mm. Paul, who wrote. Yeah. Paul, who wrote 13 of the 
the, the, the 20, 29 books of the New Testament, guess what happened to him? He was beheaded <laughs> for the word of God. So if I come up and I don't understand and I don't read it and I don't put forth the effort, that's, do y'all get what I'm saying to you? Yes. yes All is sir. not quantity. How many times you prayed? It's when you prayed, did you pray? <laughs> did you, did you, when you, it's not how many, how often, how many hours you read the Bible. You can read the Bible from cover to cover and never really read it. People in the nation of Islam know this book better than not, probably better than everybody on this line. They can take you to scriptures. You'd be like, what? They know all about David, all about this, all about that. And guess what? They're not going to heaven. They read it, but it never penetrated their hearts. So I'm saying to you, the Lord is saying, give me your all. Amen. Now watch Amen. this. Watch these scriptures. Look at verse. Let's look at the scripture again. Psalms 103. We read, we read the first part, but I want you to see something. He instructs us to give in verse one, all that is within me. Everybody see that? Yep. In verse two and three, he tells you all that God gave you. He, forg <laughs> he said he gives you all his benefits. Do y'all see it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he gives you all the benefits. But are you going to give him all that's within you? He forgives all your iniquities. Do you know the difference between the word sin has more than one word? It's broken down into two words, transgression and iniquity. Transgression is like if you're aiming an arrow at a, at a target, if you're throwing darts and you're trying to hit a bullseye, but when you throw it, you miss the mark. You was trying to hit the bullseye, but when you threw it, you it went left and you missed the mark. That's transgression. That's when you, I, I, I'm, I don't, you know, I don't want to uh, drink. I don't want to fornicate, but oops, I messed up. I missed the mark. I was supposed to do it. That's not a mistake necessarily, but you was trying to do this and then you didn't. Iniquity is, the, the picture is if somebody punches you in the face, but they don't break skin, and you bruise. Bruise is bleeding underneath the skin. Iniquity is that which nobody can see. That's why the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions, but he was bruised for our iniquities. The Bible tells you every single thing in the world. He was saying the things you don't see, the Lord says, I forgave all the stuff that don't nobody know. Now, you know, if, if, I, if I was able to talk to that uh, uh what they say, if you was, if I was a whole, a, 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 a fly on the wall, if we could talk to that in, you know, that fly that was on every one of the walls with us from birth until right now, you would look mm -hmm. for a fly swatter to kill that fly. <laughs> 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 right? Uh-uh, don't let him talk. He's going to tell stuff that you don't want nobody to know. God says, I know every single one of them. And I forgave all of them. But when you pray, you ain't giving all of me, all of yourself. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. When I, I go down to pray, I'll be like, I'm like, God, I don't know what to say. And this Lord is like, did you ever even research prayer? You got the internet. Th this is what I'm saying. When I was going through, and I can't tell everything, but when I was going through to become a chief petty officer in the Navy, what they, and Brother Salim can attest to this because he's a chief in the Navy right now. They would give us a task to do that they knew we couldn't do. Am I telling the truth, Brother Salim? Like, never lie. literally, never lie. literally impossible. We, look, you need to, um, we want you to uh, peel all these potatoes in this room. He'd be like, it's 17,000 potatoes. And you can't use a peeler or a knife. Bruh, right? Mm -hmm. You know that little uh, meme where they be like, bruh, right? You're like, how am I going to do that, right? So they know you're not going to complete it. And you know what we would come back with? Excuses. First of all, you didn't give us a knife. Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Second of all, I can't do all of this by myself. You know I can't do it. Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. And you know what they do? They'll say, did you ask any of us to help you? 
Uh, <laughs> did you look on the internet to find that there was some type of machine you all could have purchased that would uh, peel a hundred per, <laughs> per a hundred things at a time? No, I didn't look. So you know what that tells me? You really didn't want to do the job. Look, I know I'm in your face right now and I'm in your business. But the Lord is saying, do you really want to know how to study the Bible? Because no, didn't nobody teach me. I went on Google. <laughs> I went on Google, was like, how to study the Bible. And I printed out, Pastor Wynette still finds these packets. In my line, you was just going through this stuff. And one of them was like, the role of an elder, the role of a deacon, the role. I, I said, well, wait a minute. If I'm a preacher, I need to know everybody's roles. So I memorized all the roles of an apostle, a apostle, a prophet, a teacher, a pastor. Do you know I read a book on what a prophet should do every year? I have like 20 of them in my phone on the Kindle. Because it's my responsibility. What else does he got to do? He already gave me salvation. He already forgave all my iniquities. He gave me the blueprint, gave me a Bible. He let me be born in a time where we could have a Bible. He let me be born in a time where I can use the internet. But no, I be on InstaFace, Face Snap, Chat. I don't even know all of my space. I still got my Black Planet. I'm just playing. I don't have a Black Planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the question is, do you really want to know? That's the all. Man. Questions, comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Before you question and comment. He does heal all your diseases. That's garbage. What if he only healed partial? <laughs> I'll forgive some of your iniquities. I'll give you a few benefits. What do y'all think? Talk back to me. Y'all look mad. I hope I ain't hurting you. <laughs> I think yeah. oh. a reminder, you know, um, one of the excuses that people, including myself, have a lot is, you know, I got to go to work or um, the kids or, you know, different things that you have to do. And like you said, you come up with an excuse. And sometimes we put like the time frame on it. Like, why are you talking? I'm even seeing ways that I could, you know, like get up a little earlier and read. Cause it's not like you got to read a whole book, you know, like you could just take a certain part out and read. Um, it's, you know, you make time for everything else and we put that first, but when you put God first, he makes everything else that you have to do in life just fall into place. Yeah. All right. I want to say this and you're absolutely right. But it goes back to that preconceived, you, you, we think of studying the Bible a specific way. Do y'all know where I study the Bible 90% of the time I study the Bible? This is going to be crazy, but it's the honest to God truth. Pastor Wynette is smiling. On the toilet. I know that sounds so crazy. My Bible app that I use is on my phone. If you go through my phone on notes, you'll see glory to, the glory of God scriptures, King James Version. I'll pull up every scripture on the glory of God, copy it, paste it in the notes, and I'll just be reading them. Here's a, here's a novel idea. If I'm praying over the scriptures that I give, and I'm giving to them to you prophetically, which means God wanted you to hear it, why not read Psalms 103, 1 through 3, a million times and look for stuff I didn't find? All day, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bow, that means Baruch, means Baruch means to bow the knee, bow the knee, bow the knee, bow the knee, bow down. Oh, that, that's my song. Then all of a sudden, God will start giving you songs. You'll be like, bow down and worship me. Oh, worship me. You'll be putting songs in your mind. You'll be like, wow. And the next thing you know, you will start hearing it. And then you will start noticing scriptures over and over and over. Words like in that statement I gave you, Baruch Ata Adonai. Adonai should stick out. That's the word Lord. Another one is Olam. That's in there too. 
I keep saying to y'all, Olam Haba, the world to come. <laughs> right? He says, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of Olam. It's not just universe. It's more than universe. It's the new world, the he new heavens, the new earth. So as you begin to do them one by one, it begins to be a puzzle that's pieced together in your brain. And do you know what the Holy Spirit does? Once you have it, at the time you need it, the Holy Spirit said, don't worry about what you're going to say. The Spirit will go through the Rolodex of your mind. Really, it's your heart, because we hide the word in our heart when we do that. He goes through the Rolodex, and he pulls out that which you can't even, you're like, man, remember I told you, daughter, bow down. When you're sitting there, you're like, I don't really know how to pray, God. What do I need to do? He says, remember, Baruch, bow. And when you do what he says, he'll show up. But how can he how can he tell you what to do when he has no Rolodex? He speaks his word. When people say, I don't hear God, I say, you don't know the word. Because when God speaks to me, he always attaches it to his word because I told you all at the beginning, we use, what is, what do we move by? Scripture. What is that called? I just told y'all, what is it called? Is it solo scriptura? Solo scriptura. Solo scriptura, by the word alone. Now, what I just told you, if you said that to a scholar, they would understand what you mean. <laughs> if you're talking to somebody in this, in, and you're in a conversation and you say, well, no, I'm, I'm solo scriptura only, they'll say, okay, they know the word and I can't pull any fast thing on them. That's what that script, that's what that term means. It means don't come at me with some other stuff talking about, yeah, you know, God told me in the closet. Amen. That's how cults get started. Yeah. That's how cults get started. Muhammad said that he met Gabriel in a cave. This is how Islam got started. And then he heard Gabriel say, recite in the name of Allah, the, the Maleficent. Recite means Quran. The word Quran means resuscitation, rec recitation, to recite. And he, he would shake uncontrollably and recite the Quran. Allah, and he would say all of these different things. And they, they were writing them. They were, some of them wrote them down or they would memorize them. And then he felt like it was a demon. He went to a Catholic priest and said, I feel like a, he called them a jinn, which is a demon. I feel like mm -hmm. a jinn is taking over my body. And guess what the Catholic priest told him? No, this is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I always said, if old Muhammad ran across one of the old Pentecostals, <laughs> slapped some oil on the hand, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> we wouldn't even have, <laughs> let me shut up. But then when he <laughs> corralled, he'd be like, uh-uh, he'd be ripping it up, burning it up. Uh-uh, Jesus is Lord. People get confused because they don't know the scripture. Joseph Smith said that the angel Gabriel came to me in New York and gave me another book, the Book of Mormon. Well, if you knew the scripture, you knew that the last chapter of the Book of Revelation says, no man is to add to the words of this book or take away from it. If you add to this book, the plagues of this book will be added to you. If you take away from this book, then your name will be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. So as soon as Joseph Smith would have came to me, I would have said, uh, we move by the word alone around here, brother. We not flowing with you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's, that means we give all to it. That's what I'm saying to you. All right. I'm going to give you a couple of points. <laughs> yeah, they do a lot of blaming on Gabriel. Gabriel... <laughs> they blame Gabriel. I know Gabriel would be like, bro, that wasn't me. That was Lucifer dressed up like me. He wore mm -hmm. the same robe. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. No hey, joking. Prophet, Let's keep it going. You get, before you get started. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. What, is, what about the, the Apocrypha? Is that something that we should I, read? Or? The Apocrypha are books. Yeah. Just like today. T.D. Jakes has books, right? Uh, are they scripture? So they say that are missing mm -hmm. some missing scriptures, but I don't I don't know the back the background story. I don't know. I can we can do a study on we can do a talk about it. I talked a little bit when we some of y'all went through how to study the Bible, right? Did I go through that with y'all? Yep. Y'all yeah. remember me talking a little bit about them? Yeah. 
there are mm. there are not missing books in the Bible. Mm. We talk about the canon. I could talk about how the Bible is canonized. Canonized okay. meaning how you it's a process by which you know the scriptures are the scripture because all okay. scripture talks. <clears throat> you can't have somebody talking about uh yeah, when Jesus was a baby, he used to raise birds from the dead. You're like, <laughs> right? For what? He's why would he raise a bird and then later on you see him eating? <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? That makes no sense, right? So anyway, we can talk about it, but you know, the apocrypha, um, nah. They're books. Some of them are true, some of them aren't. The 66 is where I would go. Um, there are a couple of books that are mentioned in the Bible, but that doesn't necessarily make them scripture. Does that make sense? And there's a process by which we do that. But I'll talk okay. to you later about it. Uh, okay. But let me tell you this. I tried to disprove the word of God. Like, when I say tried, I went to the internet. I went to Google. I read books. I tried to disprove the resurrection of Jesus. I read the rise and fall of the Roman Empire, like a thousand pages per book to try to figure out. It was a guy who did some research on it. And when he read the rise and fall of the Roman Empire, he went through the records, the Roman records, who have, they have a record of the, the execution of Christ. Mm -hmm. Or wow. as they would call him, Yeshua, Yeshua and Seti, yet Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. And when he finished reading it, he said the evidence from this, Jesus rose from the dead, is more evidence for that than Caesar existed. They have all the records. The tomb he was buried in, the body was missing. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> The, the 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 guards were executed. You know, we thought, we, we think from the movie, it was two guards at the tomb. No, a guard, a Roman guard is a, it's a term like how we use platoon. Mm. A Roman guard was 12 men and their excuse was oh. all sleep. Yeah. No. And mm. it was sealed with Pontius Pilate's seal, his signet ring. The, it's a capital punishment for breaking that seal. He put a seal on it. They didn't seal it like they sealed right. the seal on it. And for them to say, we were knocked unkind, we were all knocked out at the same time. They were all executed. <laughs> all 12 of them. They never broke their story. It was like, no, we really gone. Right? So right. it's just it's the word of God is is faithful. And we'll see that as you go through. All right, but I want to go back to this, giving God your all, <laughs> all right? And we want to get all without giving all, and that's not how the word of God works. It only works like that in one thing, in one area, salvation. When God saved you, you did nothing to save yourself. Now, I know you feel like, I did, I prayed, and I prayed that prayer. Uh, we were dead in sin. A dead man can't see. A dead man can't talk. A dead man can't hear. A dead man can't move. So therefore, when you try to talk to those friends about Jesus Christ, and they can't move, they seem like they can't hear you, they just can't see it. <laughs> They're alive, their body, I call it death row. You alive. <laughs> but you a dead man walking, right? That's what you are. It's a beautiful death row. I mean, we got beaches and everything, but you on death row. They're just waiting to, to be executed and to meet the fate that they already possess. They can't hear you. That's why you talk to them. You're like, no, 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 Jesus is real. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah, I love the Lord. But you're like, mm, it's different, right? You know what I'm talking about? You try to get them to come with you. They, don't, they can't come. They're dead in sin. So what happened to you and I at the appointed time, God knowing that you would truly accept him, him looking throughout all time and space and probability, he said, this is the hour right here that John guy will give me, give me his heart. That Jocelyn, that Adam, that Kai, that, you get you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then at that moment, he did this. He opened your eyes and you're like, He's real. He was real all the time. You were just blind. Yeah. You get yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I hear God. This is like he's talking to me. 
You were, you, he was always talking to you, but you were deaf, you were dead, you couldn't hear. He opened your eyes. What did the song say? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. <laughs> it was amazing grace. That's the only thing that's free. He gave you the faith to believe. He opened your eyes to see. He opened your mouth to speak. He did all of that to save you. After that, everything else comes with a cost. Do y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Everything else comes with a cost. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians is after 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Thanks. Like, oh my God, he's a genius. <laughs> 2 yes, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. I want you to see this. This is a powerful pr principle. Pastor Juanette, read that for me. Read that powerfully for me. Give me your all on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. All right. We always take this and talk about money, 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 money. I'm not talking about money. Money is a part of it, but it's talking of, it's a principle. Mm -hmm. If, a, if a, Jesus said it like this, he said this to his disciples. He said, the kingdom of God is like a man who takes seed and he just keeps throwing the seed. He disperses the seeds everywhere, all throughout, all throughout the field. He's just throwing them, right? Now, as the seed begins to take root and begins to grow, Satan comes in and plants one or two of his seeds in there. And as they begin to grow, they look just alike, but some of them aren't good. He says, don't, get them, don't pull them up, but let them grow up together. That at the end of the world, Jesus can, he can separate the good from the bad. But what he was saying, the principle is, God didn't, he's not building his kingdom by just putting one seed at a time. <laughs> if you put one seed, what if that seed goes bad? Now you've been lost everything. It's just one seed, right? But when you, when you put, if you get distribute all your seed, don't hold back. Let it go. When you do that, if you, if you, if you sow sparingly a little bit, you're going to reap a little bit. If you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. If you give much, you'll get much. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Here's another way to say it. And this is talking about forgiveness, not money. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down. Somebody gives you so much, they press it down. You know, you put flour in a thing, it gets too fluffy, you have to pack that thing down, you can get more. He says, shake it together, make it sure it's filled, and then I'll make it where it just runs over. But you have to give first. This is the principle. So if you want to learn to pray, he's not gonna just come out of the sky and say, my daughter, this is how you pray. Oh, and you sit down, you're like, I got it. I know how to do it now, everybody. Everybody back off. I know how to do this thing now. No, pastor, don't even worry about it. I got prayer today, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You're just a prayer warrior, just too, no. You want to learn how to pray, pray. Mess it up. Oops, I'm sorry, Lord. And then you keep going and then pray. And then what he does, he says, oh, she's seeking me. He's seeking me, then they're going to find me. Mm. And God will do this to you just to mess with you. You'll be like, I'm starting to get it. And he'll back up some. You'll be like, do I really got it? <laughs> he wants you to come further. And then all of a sudden, your prayer time will be powerful and impactful. If you want to learn how to study the Bible, don't just, would you say, who, who are you waiting on? Who's going to mm -hmm. come up to you and teach you how? 
you got to learn. So, you know how many people have come to me and said to me, I want you to, can you teach me how to study the word? You know what I used to do? I used to be like, all right, look, we're going to get together. I'll come to your house every day. I would come. Pastor Wynette knows this. I would be willing to come. Look, we're going to get together. We're going to do, you know what I found out shortly thereafter? They didn't really want to learn how to study the Bible. They start flaking because it's a reason they don't know how to study. They didn't want to. <laughs> All right, watch this. I know I'm messing with you. I'm going to end on some good notes, but I need to drive this point home. All right. I'm going to start with Brother Adam. What is the one thing you know better than anything else? You just love it. You can learn about it every day, all day. Oh, uh, a couple of things. Uh, health. Health. All right. Yeah. Brother Celine, what is the one thing you like? Boy, I know this. This is what I do. Trons. Probably, say it again. Trons. Electronics. I ain't know what trons were. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh trons. <laughs> Daddy, you know that. You know, you know it. If you call it, you don't know. You don't know. You know, like a first name basis with Electra. Like, what's up, Trons? Like, what's up, Celine? What's going on? I love it. I love it. Sister Andrea, what do you, what do you like the thing you like? Uh. Um, shoes. Oh, so you and Pastor Juanette have something. <laughs> Pastor Juanette is a shoe fanatic, as she would call herself. All right. What about you, Sister Guy? What is the one thing you just know, no, no, no? Um, like anything to do like with literature, reading, writing, stuff like that. And you can do it all day. You yeah. know how I, and let me tell you this, look, you, you all are giving me good stuff, but I want you to think of this. The way you know it is, you know all these little w random weird facts about it. <laughs> you know, like, why would you memorize that? You know what I'm talking about? Like right. trons, yeah, we call them trons because they have electrons. And, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Back in the day, yeah, you, get two, you like, dang. Right. Susan yeah. Johnson, what about you? Um... Hmm. Um, I don't know how to, I'm a good, um, motivator to other people. Like, um, people will call me, my friends and stuff. They, they come to me whenever they need somebody to help them, like, think out a process or like, you know, see outside of the box that they in, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. That makes any sense. Yeah, that is. That's, that yeah. is a very big skill. That's a lucrative skill, Sister Jocelyn. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> For real, one of our friends. Yeah. She works directly with Tony Robbins. She's like she knows him, knows him out here in San mm -hmm. Diego, and that is a very lucrative thing. And Tony Robbins <laughs> ran into the same problem I'm talking to you about that the scripture says when he first started his company, it was all free. All his shows, all of his curriculum, mm -hmm. he gave everything away free. He said he couldn't get 30 people to come and see him, which is kind of the same thing I'm running into with. Because I guarantee you, if I went out and I started talking about money and started like a traditional church, you need to give, come on, you got to give and start giving. It was just, blah, blah, blah. it's like, y'all just want me to take your money? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your money. Keep your money and do something with it. Well, he had to start charging and he figured out the more he charged, the more people will come because people don't just want to give all. They have to give you money and then feel like, oh, I got to do, I gave them all this money. Mm -hmm. That makes them, it makes, forces them to give all. Mm -hmm. That's what God is running to it. All right, Pastor Juanette is shoes, shoes, shoes. She has other stuff too, but she definitely knows shoes. Hmm. <laughs> He's going to get me, watch this. That's the only thing you could say. <laughs> no, I know you have this stuff too. Admin. Admin. She is a beast at admin. Anybody else? Nancy, brother, sister Nancy, brother Donald, what y'all, what y'all get at? Mine's will be administration. Uh oh, beast mode. <laughs> brother Donald. 
Sister Lily? Um, I would say, I almost feel safe because I don't be doing it a lot. But to be honest, what I love to do is research God's word and the things of God and put lessons together. Like Amen. I could do that all day in my office, just finding new things. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's awesome. Sister Candace. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, like what we know in and out. Say it again. Would, basically like what we know in and out. Or we can, what we can spend a lot of time doing or learning about. Right. I might be hearing you wrong. I would say probably uh, skincare. Oh. So you be doing the, the cucumbers on the eyeball. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> be like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, your skin is blotchy. You got to put a little bit of milk and magnesia right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly like that. Just <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. Except I don't know anything about it, right? So I don't know anything <laughs> about it. So if, and, I, and I'm going to end with this, right? So if Sister Candace, if I, who know nothing about skincare, and am going to try to learn skincare, I'm not going to be able to learn it just by her talking to me and telling me about it. I'm not, I, I can't because my brain is wired to not really learn skincare because if it was, I would have learned it. Right. It doesn't interest me, interest me necessarily. And it might interest me, but it's not my primary thing where I'm like, Oh yeah, I gotta learn skincare. So if I really, if I say, you know what, I'm going to learn it. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna research and find out the top people in skincare. I'm gonna find out what they talk about. I'm gonna find keywords that matches those people. If it's ten of them and they always say this one specific word, then I'm gonna say, okay, what is that? That's what I deal with the Word of God. I was at, I was at church and I was, you know, starting to read a little bit. And then when I would talk to people, I was like, they don't even know this. This person is like 60 years old. How long you been here? I was young, like 10 or 12. Oh, I, I've been going here my whole life. I was like, they don't know this. So I was like, I know it's being taught, but you can't get, they only, I didn't know that you only retain 10%, 10 to 20% of the 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes, which is the introduction, by the way. Mm. So when they leave, they didn't hear none of the, they didn't hear none of it. Usually what happens in the body of Christ is they sit there. A lot of times they walk away, something really bad happens. And they say, oh no, I got to get serious. And then they learn a word. And you know what we call that in, as pastors? 10%. 10% of the church does everything. So those few people that get serious, we overwork them. This is, a, this is what I'm telling you. This is a literal study that has been conducted on the church, the Christian church in America. 80% of the people, 80 to 90% of the people do absolutely nothing. They just come. 10% does everything. The other 10%, they're the choir members. They'll do usher. But they'll have one job. And usually those small 10% get burnt out or they're being sought after by other pastors trying to increase their 10% to pull them out to come to their church. Oh, you can sing real good. Praise and worship leader. But you're the praise and worship leader. You're also the administration lady. You count the money. <laughs> right? You're the pastor's armor bearer. You're sitting there just pulling your hair out. Like, oh, my God, I hate coming to church. This is what's happening. And the Lord is saying, those are good things, but I just want all of you. Can you just show me you want all? You don't have to learn all of the Bible. Just choose one thing that you want to know about me and learn it and worship me and seek me does that make sense amen that's all i wanted to say i really had more to say but i'm gonna leave it at that because he does so much all of his every word that describes god has the word all he's 
He is omniscient, all knowing. <laughs> he is omnipotent, omnipotent, which means all powerful, <laughs> right? He is omnipresent. He's all places at one time. And he uses all of himself to help us. He uses his all power to provide gravity. Gravity is huge. <laughs> Look at this. If our sales, our, our, excuse me, not our sales, our atoms in, that make up our body spin the exact same way as the planet. If they reversed, we would stop and everything would run into us. All the trees, everything would be moving at 25,000 miles per day. <laughs> we would literally all blow up. And he just does that. His mercies are new every morning. <laughs> he just, and we don't even realize that one little thing. I heard a scientist say, if gravity just increased by 1%, everybody would be squished. We would all blow up. All of our bodies would blow up. The gravity would just, and we would die. And God says, nope, live. And then he says, tell me, I, want, I know you already, but I want you to just give me all of you. I don't want to take it. And we say, and really, let me say this to you all, because I think the people online, you're willing to give him all. But you don't know what all is. All is just with all, to sum it up, it's with every, give it all you got. That's what he's saying. He's not saying, give me this and give me this. This is my little, I had allergies. This is, give me your phone. Give me this. I need all your time. He's, he's not telling you that. He's not telling you to read the Bible all day, every day. Cause that's what we try to do. I need to get two hours in, in the Bible every day. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have two hours. You got three kids, you got a job or you got one kid and you got a job or you might be a single parent or you might be going through a divorce. You might be, or your husband's just a little lazy. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I'm a husband. I'm looking <laughs> past my neck laughing a little bit, right? He, whatever. You might have a dog that pee everywhere and take, take all your time up and you don't have two hours, but you, if you given him all you got, you can look at that two hours and say, I'm going to break it up in five minute increments all day. I'm going to say, I got to go to the bathroom. Five minutes. Oh, man. I'm going to go and buy a book that gives me something to, to read about 365 days a year. They have them all over. And when you just give it all you got, he'll take that and it'll add up to more then that two hours you were going to sacrifice and give halfway anyway. Does that make sense? And that's what I'm telling you guys. So when we come in next time, I'm believing God that you're going to, to apply the principles of second Corinthians nine, six through eight. And you're going to say, I'm giving, I'm sowing abundantly into my life by giving God more of my energy. When I pray, I'm going to, Pray, even if I run out of words, mm -hmm. I'm gonna run out of words with all my strength, not loud necessarily, but with all the passion that's in me. Mm -hmm. When I read the word, I'm gonna say, Lord, I wanna, I wanna understand it. I'm gonna start with what Prophet John gave us in Psalms 103. And Father, I pray that you just give me more, give me more. And if not, I'll just keep reading Psalms 103, Psalms 104, until you give me something, Lord. I'm gonna keep doing it. That's when you do that. The Bible says if you draw nigh to him, he will then draw nigh to you. But if you hear saying, I got a one day, one day, I'm going to get there. You ain't moving. That's what I'm saying. And I'm believing God is going to start pouring out. He's going to, man, Ephesians 1 and 3, write it down, says that he has, hath already, blessed you with every, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In heaven, he has a bank in the spirit, if you will, full of every one of the blessings that he has for you already stacked up where you could be, you could be the next, well, I don't even know. You could be the next Tony Robbins, Sister Jocelyn. <laughs> you don't even know it. You just, 
you got all this ability to motivate. That's how he found out. People would always come to him. He was like, I should probably make money off of this. They always coming to me. You don't know who you are. He mm -hmm. has his stack in the bank. And he's just saying, come to me. I already have blessed you with it. I, but the only reason I haven't released it is you have given, you haven't given enough to get it. And when I say enough, I mean, Amen. this of you. He don't want your, he, he don't want your money. He don't want, I mean, you can give money to his kingdom. That's a blessing, but it's not like God up casting checks. <laughs> you know what I mean? The tithe go to human beings that helps his cause, but he don't have a bank up in heaven. There's no money. He wants you. And when you begin to do it, God is saying, I'm going to start just, oh, she got it. Broom. It's not a magic thing. It is a principle. This is how you live victoriously. If you want it from God, start giving stuff. Giving of your time, giving of your heart, giving more, seeking him for it. And he's like, oh, oh, okay. She didn't peep out the principle. He's got it. The principle is you sow, you reap. You'll never get corn if the corn seeds remain on your desk in your house. You got all of these seeds, <laughs> hallelujah. And what we're gonna begin to do is decree and declare his word and then act on it. I'm reading Psalms 103 before I get ready to pray. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I'm gonna know it and all, and it's gonna mean something. Bless Baruch, soul, nefesh, all that is within me. Oh, you mean all that animates me, that makes me move and live and have my being. I'm giving it, I'm all, I'm giving it all to you. I'm, and then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to bow again, bless his holy name, Baruch, his holy name. He's telling me to get on my knees. Isn't that what he sounds like? He's saying, and this is when God will begin to release the stuff that he has. And when I say release, I'm saying that specifically because it's yours. It belongs to you, but it is being withheld because mm. you and I aren't operating by the principles. But I'm believing by God's word and his, 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 I feel the unction of the Holy Spirit that as we begin to apply it, it'll work. And this is very important in, as we end in light of all of the things that's happening in the world. As the world goes down, and we're going to talk about this next week. We're getting ready to explode. The church is going to, is going to do the opposite. <laughs> There's going to be a wealth transfer from the world to the body of Christ. And that's because there is coming a global financial collapse. Mm -hmm. But you got all of these believers who are like, uh, the name it and claim it. They don't know the real principle. <laughs> They're... They're giving money and they get money back and it corrupts them because they don't understand the real principle is the heart. It's the soul. It's the nefesh. It's all that is within them. As we begin to lay up spiritual, uh, how do we say it? Spiritual riches in the kingdom of heaven, God will translate that into what we're going to need in the upcoming hour that is coming upon the planet. So what I'm telling you, I'm not playing about that. I'm dead serious. And I'm going to show y'all in the word when we come back next week, how the, this is a prophecy that God has shown that he is going to transfer all of this. There's going to be a great revival. He's going to be, a, it's going to be a great outpouring of his spirit right before the great tribulation. And we as kingdom ambassadors, we got to be ready. Mm -hmm. But if he gives it to you, and you don't give all, you'll mess it up. If God gives me a billion dollars right now, I make Cadillac the number one dealership in America. <laughs> I'm just keeping it. <laughs> Look, I got me, a, I mess around and got me a little Escalade and I'm like, I want another, I want another, I want another, I want a real one, I want a blue one. Just in case I run through a blood or crib neighborhood, they'll be like, ooh, preacher, but he love, he respects her. You know what I'm saying? He can't give me a billion dollars. He needs to change my mind, right? So that way, when he gives it to me, I can remember and say, oh, I'm going to commission a movie to really tell about the rapture. I want to commission a movie to really tell the story of Angel and the story of his son, Jesus. And the you get what I'm saying? But 
and I'm going to give all of it. When I do it, I'm going to put all into it. Uh, T.D. Jakes talks about this. I got three minutes. To dr my last point. T.D. Jakes said that when he was first starting, he couldn't, he couldn't, look, the way he said, he said he couldn't buy a member to join his church. <laughs> he said, I wasn't good looking. All my friends was handsome dudes. He said, I had a little gap in my teeth and I was overweight. You know, they would talk about me. And I would just, he said, I, you know how T.D. Jakes was. He said, I would come in and I would hold my head up because everybody would be talking about, about him. He had 10 members. He said, you know what, I'm going to just, he said he grew up in a hardworking family. So he said, I'm going to apply that to this. And he said he would get bullhorn in West Virginia and jump on the back of a pickup truck, one of the deacons, and he would be preaching, get ready, get ready, get, 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 get. And it would be nobody out there listening to him. <laughs> he couldn't buy a member. Nobody would come. He would stay at 10. He finally got to like 100 or so members, and he got some friends. One of his friends was Carlton Pearson. He had a show on TBN. Two o'clock in the morning, he said, Jakes, I'll put you on at two in the morning. <laughs> he said, because you ain't prime time. You just, you know, he said, I appreciate it. And he got up there and he, this joker was preaching just like he do at the Potter's house. Look at your, slap your neighbor and say, yeah. you know how T.D. Jakes do. And it just so happened that the founder of TBN was up that night going through something. And he saw this man preaching exactly what he was going through. He picked up his phone and he, and T.D. Jake said, he said it just like this to Carlton Pearson. He said, I don't know who he is, but you get this big joker and bring him to my station. <laughs> he gave him a show. Everybody started calling for him. He moved his ministry to Dallas. They went from 100 to 30,000. And now everybody is like, oh, whoa, Bishop Jakes. He said, I remember when none of y'all liked me. <laughs> He said, that's why I don't flip out. I don't go crazy. He said, and because I'm there and I have it, he said, I said I was going to give it everything I got. I was going to do movies. I was going to write a book every year. That's why this dude, he got more books than the Bible. He got more books. He got more than 66 books. That joker writes a book every week he, because he knew what it was like to have nothing. But if you give all, even if you're not as great as everybody else, God will make you great. Amen. He will make your little stuff that you've been saying to your friends, Sister Jocelyn. He'll make people pay you $50,000 to come and speak to CEOs and say the same little thing. Mm. He'll make your name great. He'll take what you know about classrooms. He'll make you, Sister Kai, to the principal and to the dean. He'll have you in the White House overseeing all of education. Why wouldn't he want his people there? But the mm. problem with Jesus' people is that we do this. God going to bless me. And we sit down. <laughs> I got salvation free. <laughs> if I got salvation free, I'm good. Amen. Woo. Guess what? Look at your neighbor and say, money cometh. Money cometh when you worketh. <laughs> no, money don't just money to get, slap your neighbor five times. You can slap him a hundred times. Money ain't going to just, and then you know the devil will send you a check in the mail or you be, I ain't doing nothing for 30 years now. 30 years. <laughs> But God is not going to do that. We're going to receive the blessing of the Lord because we're going to put in. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm stopping right now. I'm three minutes shy of 6.30. Now, I know you only got that 10 minutes. That's why I recorded it. So that way you <laughs> can go back and read and look at it. Look at it again. And look, I, I pray you got something out of it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Sir. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes. Amen, amen. What was the subject of the lesson? Give God your all. God your all. What are the scriptures I gave? Psalm 103. 1 through 3. Ephesians 1 Ephesians 1 3. Psalm 103. And then Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 yep. through 7. What I would do is I would read all of 2 Corinthians. Chapter nine. I will read all of Psalms one of all of one of the hundred and third Psalms. I will read all of Ephesians one and meditate. But when you get to the one that's talking about what we're saying, that's what you got to do. Remember it to get it in your spirit. Don't do the pew member stuff, ambassadors. 
We don't do the pew member stuff. The pew member is, oh, that was such a, oh, powerful lesson. And then a week <laughs> later, they don't remember nothing about it. <laughs> You're like, you don't remember nothing? Nothing. We're going to repeat it. I'm going to do it too. All this week, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm getting down. When I pray, I'm going to give all. I'm going to have the music. It's going to be a, a you know, event. Mm -hmm. Event. Man, that just, that just convicted me about my wife. I need to start doing stuff and lighting the candles and roll. You know, you do that at the beginning. I need to do that too. Give it all you got. <laughs> Look. That's like... The, the flower store is not closed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Look, love you all. Let us pray, Pastor. If you could pray us out. Amen. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Father yes, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this lesson of giving us, giving you our all, Father God. You've given us your all. You've given us your son, Lord God. You've given us your kingdom, Lord God. You've given us access, complete access to you, Father God. So help us turn around and do the same thing to you, Father. We surrender our own wills, Lord God, that we can turn around and fully commit to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the lesson today. We thank you for the time that the prophet has put into studying and seeking out your word so that he can turn around and share it with us, Lord God. We don't take that for granted. I thank you for every person that is on the line tonight. I thank you for every sacrifice, Lord God, that they have made to make time to hear what you have to say in the name of Jesus. Father, sweet sleep for everyone. And we ask for productivity, Lord God, next for the next coming week, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. 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 A friend of mine, if I'm a, I wasn't going to say this to you, but I want to say this. A friend of mine, I don't even know this lady really. She, Her husband, she got married to her husband. He got uh, a horrible disease, like some horrible form of cancer and she married him on his deathbed he died and she did this um she did like this fundraiser she still does it like every year and raises like a bunch of money for it and i saw her on uh when i was working at this company anyway became friends on facebook and she put this thing out and it really hit home to me on her little page about her husband she said she said she put all of these things that she was afraid of you know, I was afraid to get married when he was about to die. Uh, I was always afraid of falling in love and losing my husband. And that happened to me. Uh, I'm afraid now that I'm about to move from Tennessee to California. I'm afraid that I'm about, I'm about to get into, the, I'm in a new relationship and I'm afraid of it. And I didn't read all of it. I said, California, I said, I live in California. I was afraid when I moved, my wife and I moved from Texas here. I said, well, we wishing you the best. I just put that on there. And then she came back and said, John, what are you, what dream are you, what, what dream is the scariest to you? I was like, where does this come from? <laughs> and then I read the rest of the post and it said, post something, a dream that you're afraid of, but you're going to commit to doing. And I put down there something that I was afraid of. I said, well, I always, before I joined the Navy, I always wanted to be, have my own real estate investment company. You know, I always wanted to do that, but I was afraid of it because of, you know, recruiting and some other things that happened. But I just put in there that, and she said, well, she, she didn't say praise God, but she was like, oh, I'm excited. I can't wait to see on Facebook that happened. And then I was like, man, I need to do that but you can't do it you can't tackle something you're afraid of if you do it halfway and when i saw it i said man that's exactly what i'm talking about today it's it's scary some of it will be scary brand new mm -hmm. you can do it why <laughs> you can do all things there's that word again through christ mm -hmm who strengthens you. And look, whoever it is that's watching online or whatever, I'm saying that to you too. You can do all things if you give your all. 
and if you do it through Christ. Amen. So we're going to do that. And I'm believing it. I can't wait. And I will ask you to do that too. Think of something that you know that you could do, but you were just a little afraid to step out on it. Write it down. And say, Lord, gee, is this mine? And if he tells you, yeah, try with everything you got. Try them. Why not? Why not? What are you going to lose? <laughs> what are you going to lose? You just do what doing what you're doing now? Just try it. Yeah. Amen. And that's a big deal Amen. for me. I got all of the training material. I've been learning it, but I'm not giving it 100%. Y'all mess around and be like, oh, probably got a new Cadillac. Just start praying for me. If you see. <laughs> <laughs> pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. All right, look, y'all. I'm really gone. Look, love you all, and I will see you all. And I can't wait to hear what you guys do in your group. All right. All right, right y'all have a good one. Love you, too. Okay. You too. Thanks, guys. Good night, guys. Night. 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 Good 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 night. Good